This home looks quiet from the outside, but owner Deanna Simpson says several ghosts are haunting it, and she's caught them in photos and recordings, including this one. The majority are bad, dark forces. People from around the world are reporting, hearing sounds, sounds that resemble the sound of a trumpet coming from the sky. over the last few weeks about strange sounds being heard in the atmosphere. People around the world and here at home have reported hearing some bizarre noises. UFOs have been the stuff of conspiracy theorists for decades, often mocked for talking about it, but maybe they shouldn't be mocked. A man and woman were driving on the Alpine Loop near Sundance this month when they captured this video of an unidentified creature. Oh, right there, right there, they say the blurry beast could be Bigfoot. You are listening to the broadcast from beyond. This is Mysterious Journeys and True Life Stories. seekers alike. We are so pleased to have you aboard our vessel of travel tonight as we traverse the universe beyond the stars for the truth. Won't you join us? And now, here is your host, Michael Hart. Well, good evening and welcome here. It's been a minute, I know, since the last or the first show we took on. Um... Of course, I've been kind of down and out from a fall that I had sustained from uh, a little injury to the old rib cage there. I was in the shower and, well, I fell. And uh, so I haven't been able to do the show for, well, for at least a couple of weeks. It's been very painful. Finally getting back to restoring uh, my my normalcy without the pain of course I could never sit here and do this without probably wincing in pain and making little noises or having to stop it sure as hell uh, I think I cracked a couple of ribs and uh, I tell you if you've ever had that happen you know what I mean it's uh, no fun at all tonight our guest is Ken Elwanger He is a former serviceman who was in the Army National Guard for, and I have to ask him if I've got this right, 12 years? 12 years served in the Army National Guard, and that was quite some time ago during the Cold War of Russia during the 80s. And, um, well, let's just say he had a Bigfoot sighting. I don't know any other way to cut it to you, but that's that's pretty much it. It was one night during a uh, a watch near an ammo dump in the New Jersey woods, and I do believe it was at night this happened. And he's going to be joining us after the break, so uh, we have that coming up. Um, and around the world. <clears throat> There is an awful lot going on, quite a bit, especially since I've been away doing the first show. Hawaii. One thing I I wanted to talk about for at least a few seconds here, Mount Kilauea still going off. That's one heck of a uh, that's one heck of a volcano. 
I remember back when the when the volcano would go off, they used to uh, actually have vents around this and and watch this thing go off at a safe distance. And you know, it's kind of like going to a firework display. And that was that. Once it went off, it was done, and there was really no serious serious danger. Oh boy, that isn't the case now, is it? This thing is continuing to go off. Now, while it might be creating a new shelf to the island, it's also destroying quite a bit of what was already there. It's a it's a mean sucker. It's got a bad case of acid indigestion. It's a lack of a better joke, but that's kind of the way way I see it. It uh, it definitely hasn't stopped yet, and I'm not sure when it's going to. One of the main concerns is that the greater part of that island that it surrounds is going to cave in, collapse, and go into the ocean and create a pretty big tsunami swell. Well, let's just hope that that isn't the case. I hope that doesn't happen. And then, of course, we have our own worries here as we nervously watch our own large volcano here at home. Yellowstone. Yellowstone has been doing some pretty weird stuff. It's been moving around, that's for sure. But I think that uh, as long as the geysers are going off and uh, there's some hot steam coming out of that sucker venting, maybe, maybe there's no cause for alarm yet. But will we see that sucker go off anytime soon? It's a good question. Kind of have a funny feeling we might. Let's hope not, because that that would probably be the end of the U.S. as we know it. I, I'm dead serious about that. That is one big volcano. If it goes off in the way they say it's going to, that's a massive amount of land that it would take with it. Was it two or three states? I think, in that surrounding area, anything within that radius would not survive the initial blast, I wouldn't think. So, with that said, we're going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, we are definitely going to get into our interview with Kenneth Elwanger, right here on Mysterious Journeys. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. You are listening to the broadcast from beyond. This is Mysterious Journeys and True Life Stories. Everyone likes free stuff. I know I do. There are two things I like to hear that comes with the word free. Free music and royalty free music. That's right. Now that's having your cake and eating it too. That's why I want to take the time to tell you about an offer you can't refuse. If you're a podcaster, filmmaker, or YouTube video creator looking for great sounding background music, soundtracks, or bumper music, then Royalty Free Planet is the place for you. They have hundreds of artists and genres to choose from, with categories ranging from hip-hop, trap, dubstep, to modern dance tracks, rock, and even 80s style synthscapes. It's one I use as bumper tracks for my show, and if you're a podcaster, you'll love the high quality sound of these talented artists who have worked hard to bring us their music. 
and offer a copyright free advantage to make your project sound great. Just remember to give these artists the credit by listing the name of the artist and song title. It's the least we could do in return for their hard earned efforts to bring you pro sounds at no cost or copyright cost to you. So check out their YouTube channel and listen to the variety of excellent selections they offer at Royalty Free Planet. That's Royalty Free Planet. You'll be glad you did, and they will too. Welcome back to the show. We have uh, Ken Elwanger on the phone, and he's going to tell us about his, well, I guess you would only call it one thing, a Bigfoot sighting. And we have him on the phone. Ken, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, good. Um, I think what we're going to do, I guess, is for the be- the best thing to do is just to tell us... Uh, you were in the New Jersey um, woods that night. Where exactly in New Jersey were you? I was in Fort Dix. Fort Dix, okay. And where exactly is that uh, geographically in New Jersey? I'm not quite sure now. It's been a long time. I understand. Yeah, that's fine. Um, not really not, not really sure offhand. Oh, that's okay. Um, but uh, so you were, let's see, you were what guarding an ammo dump? Did you say? Yes, I was. There were two of us. Two and, of you. Uh, oh. We decided to walk towards each other instead of with each other, mm-hmm. uh, so that we would loop around and we see each other as we're coming by. Um, so he was on the other side, and I was. I heard this rather strange noise that sounded like a howl, but half human, half uh, animal. What? What exactly? And, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. What? 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 I mean, we say half human, half uh, animal. Um, what exactly? How would you describe that? That howl that he was. That this this thing made. I'm not quite sure what it was. It uh, basically it just didn't sound like either. So uh, close to be a bear or or anything like that. Right. Close to it ma- sound all on its own. Right. Did it sound close to maybe like a howl of a, a wolf or a coyote or something like that? Ma- mainly a wolf. Similar, maybe. Um, Sort of. sort of. Sort of. I'm not trying to say it was a wolf, but yeah. You know, I'm just trying to get an idea I, of what. It just it was a howl, and but it, it also sounded like a like it was communicating, you know, in some way. Do you think it was communicating with with you guys? It saw you, or I'm not certain. Yeah, I can't be certain. Okay. Well, I mean, <clears throat> so you guys were out guarding an ammo dump, is that correct? Yeah. And this was, it was at, about 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so it was, okay, so it was dark. Right. So how did you see it when you did see it? Well, the, the lights that encamped the area, uh, it was up on a hill, uh, flat, sort of hill like. And uh, I would say about maybe a football field out uh, would be the edge of the uh, the forest and uh, I saw him because the lights completely illuminated the area there gotcha right so um, and you said it was the howl that that 
caught your attention and you, what did you do? You just looked? I down. turned around to look from uh, towards where the sound came from and uh, I noticed something standing there that didn't look like a bear. Um, but it was tall. Uh, I mean, bears have short legs, you know, and they're squatty and they're Mm-hmm. Fat like, you know, they got stubby bodies. Right, I've seen them uh, before. Right, uh, but this looked like the body of a human with it really hairy. Uh, but the face didn't look like a human either. What what um, what would you could see? What would you say his face looked like exactly? Uh, that was a. Uh, it didn't have a long nose, uh, like a dog or a bear or anything. It was, it was sort of flat, but rounded. So, kind of gave that little lump of pre-man look, you know, the where the jaw sticks out just slightly. Mm. And it had a heavy brow. Oh, heavy brow. Yeah. What was the this the hair color? Was it a brown or a black or? Uh, from what I could tell, it was sort of a a reddish brown. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. And yeah. uh, how long were you standing there looking at this uh, this creature? Well, not very long. Um, maybe a. Not even a minute. I looked at it, and my friend started coming around the corner. Uh, and I asked, I turned to look at him and said, "Did you hear a noise?" And he said, "No." So I didn't want to go any further with it. So I just left it at that. But when I turned around, it wasn't there anymore. So had left, obviously. Right. Right. But before that. Or all that <laughs> actually made eye contact with each other. I knew uh, it was looking at me, and I for sure knew that it, I was looking at him. <laughs> um, Gosh, what were you? The height of them, the, I would say the trees were probably about three stories, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say he looking at the trees I would say it was about eight or nine feet good grief jeez yeah. oh, that's pretty big yeah uh, it is <laughs> yeah um, what were you thinking when you saw this I mean, what was the first thing in your mind um, I was just in awe I really wasn't thinking anything other than the fact that Later on, I realized, you know, I never really actually believed in Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. Um, But after that day, it kind of gave me a question in my head. What was that? Right. Um, So, it left, and how long would you say you've been standing there looking at this thing? I said it wasn't even a minute before he before my friend came around the corner Mm -hmm. and uh, I turned around and it was gone wow did you did you hear it leave did it sound heavy or anything from that distance or no 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 Uh, Hmm. I did notice a a sort of older uh, is what they talk about I never knew I, I never actually heard about odors until later on in uh, I don't know about the 90s I started hearing about uh, them having some sort of an odor um, I think the wind was just going the right direction because it sort of smelled like wet dog and uh, dirt like a B.O. Um, smell <laughs> yeah, B.O. Swamp, maybe. Just, yeah, skunkish. Wow. Smell. Well, 
wasn't really had a very attractive smell. No, I wouldn't it say. It also would. did have that salty scent that dogs' paws might have. Yeah, yeah, I know that smell. <laughs> yeah, very. Much. And it's very, very strong. Um, I remember uh, as a child, there was a sloth that I visited at the at a, a zoo, and the man hung the sloth on me, and it had that salty scent to it very strongly. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it, it, it was kind of that strong, is what I'm saying. Gotcha. You know? Yeah, I I really do uh, get that because of, obviously yeah. you know most of us have owned any animals have smelled that that kind of scent. Um, and I was weird like that with with <laughs> dogs. You know, I'd smell their paws for <laughs> some reason. But <laughs> I was a kid then, but. Uh, it was more curiosity than anything else, but uh, you you never saw anything like that again, did you? No, not at all. What year was this? Uh, it was about eighty. Nineteen eighty. During the summer. Right. Wow. Well, <clears throat> do you believe in it now, or or you still think there's? I believe that there is something that. Uh, I don't quite know what it is, other than the fact that uh, it does speak in the Bible about nippling. I was going to bring that up. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the fact that hardly anybody can see them, uh, that only, you know, a few people do, I wonder, and they hide very well. Uh, just wonder that if they... Uh, you know, because the Nephilim pro- passed between dimensions or whatever. Yes. Um, and we all know that the Nephilim are are uh, distractions uh, to the truth. It's just the uh, and, uh, the devil uh, showing things to disprove the truth of the Bible. Oh yes, I I agree. Um, there's a movie coming out, and it's just been. I actually just watched some previews, and it's about the the uh, what's the name of that place? Uh, it, we talked about it before. It was the uh, ranch. Oh, the ranch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gosh, forgive me. I I'm trying to remember the name of it. Just I can't think of it now. Yeah. I I just just saw it the other oh, day. It's um, the- Skinwalker, Skinwalker Ranch. I'm sorry, I, I my mind shot, but There's all kinds of weird things going on there, UFOs and yes, uh, Bigfoot sightings, weird animals and all kinds of stuff going on. And, yeah, uh, I have the like I have the and I I have the book here uh, written by George Knapp, uh, who's a radio talk show host on coast to coast am he wrote, he wrote the book he was th- he was there i believe for quite a bit of the the activity going on and witnessed some of it himself and uh but there just happens to be a movie coming out on the book as of the other a couple of days ago i saw the previews and it looks really good but uh it, and, and there was all these kind of manifestations um that are going i think in and out of dimensions uh, but I also believe that there are portals to hell, between heaven and hell, and a lot of these things are just trickery to get us to believe, or or like aliens and things like that, that I just don't think are from some other planet. And the Bigfoot phenomenon, if you throw all this together, to me it makes sense that we would see these kind of things, because... There would, they're just manifestations of some sort of spirit, you know, on the other side that we just don't understand. And like you said, it, it could be a precursor to fooling us into believing the occult things that we're seeing without explanation. Now, Native Americans spoke of them, and they had a word for them, which is tricksters. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, 
interesting myself because it kind of <laughs> goes goes in with what the Bible says about them. Correct. Yeah. Devil's ministry is to steal, kill, and destroy, and uh, he wants to rob us of the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the reason why. I, yeah, that's the reason why I don't. A lot of these alien um, appearances and UFOs and things, I think, are just nothing more than trickery from that existence. And it's not from some... I don't believe they're from some other planet. Now, I could be wrong, but I just don't feel that way. I think they're they're here to distract us and to fool us into believing something that's more occult. Wouldn't you agree? According to science, uh, scientists, it's... It's physically impossible uh, unless you're able to bend light, you know, or bend space uh, for them to go to uh, such lengths to get through the uh, space like this, you know. So, if anything, if that's true, then I don't think they come from very far away. Um, people have spoken of the fact that uh, they've seen a flash of light in the, in the sky and all of a sudden a UFO occurs. Yes. Uh, and- I have never seen it. Uh, I don't know much about it. Well, I'm just going by what other people say. Well, yeah. I've, I've actually had my own experience and sometime <laughs> soon I'll have to actually put that on the show about what I had seen one night while on uh, duty for a uh, ambulance company. I was in another state when it happened, but I can attest to that because it was very, it, 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 it wasn't just that I saw something, it was an eerie, foreboding feeling I had. Like, I should not be there. It was something that just crept up inside of you. Not that you saw something and you were frightened by the unknown. It was more like a foreboding presence. You, you know what I mean? Right. And I'll never forget that, what happened to me that night. But, so, you, uh, what was your main job in, in, during that time uh, when you were in the uh, National Guard? Well, when I first joined, it was in Topeka, Kansas. Mm-hmm. And I was in a maintenance unit. I worked on, I drove trucks and I worked on uh, vehicles. Right. So you were, you were in, uh, what, a, uh, how would you classify that in, uh, in, in the National Guard? Like what, what was the MO? Oh, I was a 64 Charlie, which uh, now is a, 88 Mike. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I, I couldn't get... That was my fault. I couldn't get it out. Well, I... That's... Okay, for a minute. For a minute there, I went... <laughs> my brain wasn't working. <laughs> well, we're... I think we both are kind of tired. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I... You know, at that, I'm going to... We're going to stop here because... It's a it's an interesting story, and I think it was worth telling. And uh, you know, I'm always looking out the window sometimes, just thinking, will I ever catch a glimpse of something like this? I don't know. But uh, uh, nevertheless, I think it it was definitely a story that needed to be told right here. And uh, Ken, it was it was great, my friend, having you on, and thank you for staying up with me uh, for this interesting and revealing story. Well, thank you very much, too, for having me on your show. Oh, uh, well, you know, this is it's... something I don't really talk about very much. Well, you know, it's it's more than just that. You are a, a good friend and a close friend, and it's it's not just you being on the show. It's you being here, even if you are just on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, my friend, I thank you so much for your time. Okay. All right. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was very, very interesting, and I'm glad Ken joined us tonight. And I think that was definitely worth telling. Don't you think? Absolutely. So, with that being said, I'm going to bid you a good night and sleep well. Until next time, try to stay out of the dark. Good night. You have been listening to the broadcast from beyond. This is Mysterious Journeys and True Life Stories. Good night. <laughs>